Hey, Steve Bazic Architect. We are out here at our new Age Estate project. We're talking foundations today. Let's get after it. All right, so here we are. We talked about footings last time. We talked about how we get the elevations. Guys have been out here working tirelessly, getting all of our form work in. Now, I wanted to walk you through when we were talking about, um, we were down in the hole talking about the footings, we talked about the different levels. So you can kind of see them here, but I'm gonna reiterate, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes them different. So. That far corner, you can see there, it's a pretty tall wall. That's 12 feet of formwork. It's gonna finish out with an 11 foot tall wall there. That gets dropped down that two feet, media room, potentially a golf simulator. We haven't quite decided yet. Um, so that's what I would call the deep basement, if you will. And then here, this middle section and this little wing behind me, we're gonna have a little connector piece that connects those here, that's a standard basement. That's gonna be your standard nine foot tall wall. Now, the difference between the nine and the 11 foot wall is simply that two feet. The nine foot wall, typically, we will have a bar mid height, a couple bars at the top, and understand this is gonna have a braced floor frame on it. So, meaning that as we backfill this foundation wall, it's gonna have a tendency to wanna to push in, but the frame floor is gonna resist pushback, and we're gonna use that floor diaphragm as the kind of hold back for this as a retaining wall. If there was no floor frame, then this would have to be installed as a retaining wall because there would be that constant push to try and overturn this wall. Now, the minute we jump to 11 feet, and this might be a stretch for you, but Think of the foundation wall. You can take any section of it. You can take a large section of it and it's nothing more than a beam, right? Dirt is pushing on it. It's braced at the top. The L bars that are in the foundation that come out and grab the bottom, they brace the bottom. So the top and the bottom are braced, but that dirt force and the lateral force on the wall makes that foundation want to bend. So nine foot wall, it's pretty easily taken care of. We put a bar in the middle. Um, we have a couple bars at top that work like a belt on it. And then of course the L bars at the bottom. But when we jump to the 11 feet, we basically extend the span on that beam. And you remember me talking when we were talking about concrete footings, concrete is exceptional in compression, right? I'm standing on it. I'm putting all 160 pounds on this. It's not going anywhere. Not gonna crack, none of that. But if I made this concrete one inch thick and four foot wide with two supports and I stood in the middle, my 160 pounds would probably snap it because underneath, if there's no support, direct support, then not only is the, that one inch plate partially in compression, the bottom part is in tension. And that's where concrete is absolutely horrible. It really doesn't have any tensile forces. So we put steel reinforcing in there because that's kind of the um, pick me up uh, big brother to lean on for concrete. So we move to the 11 foot wall, the span of the beam gets longer. So in that case, we have actually introduced vertical bars to make sure that that wall stays true. So we have some added reinforcement there. So standard wall, kind of standard wall plus extreme wall there. And then as we move this way and walk up here, all right, you'll notice right here, the foundation steps up. And when it steps up like that, it goes to a small crawl space here. Now, the crawl space, the wall goes from the nine foot wall to a like four, four foot wall here. And that four foot wall now 
the beam has gotten shorter. So we have some light reinforcing in there to basically hold it together, but we're very little concern about that bending and it's gonna be braced at the top. Now, the wall that connects this corner to that corner is different than all of the walls here in that that wall doesn't have a connection to the floor diaphragm. So it's not braced on the top. So that wall there actually has to be built as a retaining wall. And when you build it as a retaining wall, basically I have the wall, I can either put a footing on this side. So as the wall tries to topple over, the footing has to rotate in the ground. And because you go back four, five, six feet, eight feet, whatever the calculations require, that, that wants to rotate as a whole, but the ground here is gonna resist and this won't be able to turn, which means the wall won't be able to turn. But we didn't choose to do that retaining wall. We did the opposite. This retaining wall is gonna be like this and we're gonna come in with the slab on the top and we'll have bars that go up the wall and into the slab. So basically the slab is bracing the wall at the top, not in compression, but in tension. And we're gonna use the steel and the concrete to do that. It's basically pulling the top of that wall in this direction to keep it from toppling over. And it's gonna be able to put that in a position to succeed as a retaining wall there. So right here in just this small section, we have four different foundation types. And then of course, we're gonna finish up over here um, we're going to talk about what happens out at the garage and uh, yeah, my, bear with me, my son's walking backwards through all this stuff. But here you can see, because this is a garage, we only need to excavate where we're going to put the wall. So we have dirt on both sides. So it's not a retaining wall. This wall actually gets braced because there's dirt on both sides of the wall. So it has some minor reinforcing in there. We always put a couple bars in there just to help with that wall and give a little bit of tensile strength. But this is none of what we're seeing there. This is basically a fully braced wall on both sides. So it's real easy if you're doing a slab on grade or garage walls because the dirt is now pushing on both sides. So the stability of the wall is coming from equalized pressure on both sides of the wall. So, um, you know, here, I don't know if you can capture it, but you can get a good shot and you can see how all of the horizontal bars and the J bars and everything's tying in. Typically, uh, our foundation walls here, they're a 10 inch concrete wall. They sit on a two foot wide by 12 inch tall footing. The footing has a couple number fives in the bottom and then it has the number four L bars that rise up out of it. So that way there we make the connection on that cold joint from cast wall to cast footing. So anyways, I think that's about it. We can pan over here, get a nice shot. But uh, the next time we talk, we'll return here. All the form work will go away and uh, foundation wall, and then guess what? We're gonna jump inside, we'll do some water mitigation, some stone, insulation, all that good stuff, but framing is literally right around the corner. So if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, smash that subscribe button. Tell all your friends, this is the place to come. You wanna talk construction, leave your comments in there, be respectful, I will get to them. Um, eventually. I'm a busy guy, but I like to have those conversations and that's exactly what this is. It's a conversation, right? It's not a lecture series. So drop that in there and until next time, you know what's coming. Long live our buildings.